Hello guys, Tav HD here and welcome back to another video and today I will be showing you my latest purchase off eBay but I can hardly call it a purchase as it only cost me £1. This is indeed a titanium powerbook G4 and it cost me a grand total of £1. It was an auction so people were meant to bid but no one bid so I got it for a pound but I think there's a pretty good reason why I got this for a pound. So let's take it out of this bubble wrap and see exactly why this thing was so cheap. All right, so this thing was a pound, as I already said, and you can probably already start to tell why that was the case. As is the case with all of these titanium power books, the paint is coming off on the front. This size isn't actually too bad, and the other side isn't looking particularly good as you can see. But the biggest problem with this thing is on the back. Here is the back as you can see and well, what's happened to these hinges? This hinge is perfectly fine, it's just lost its cover. However, this hinge doesn't really hinge anymore. Let me open this thing up and take a look at that. That's not really attached, so only one side of the hinge is attached, which isn't particularly good. So I don't really know too much about this machine. I don't really know the specs. What I do know is that it does apparently boot up, but it gets stuck on the Apple screen, the one where it swirls when it's meant to be loading up. Now the seller said that they were going to take the hard drive out of this before selling it. It took them over a week to dispatch it, so I'm guessing in that time they were indeed taking the hard drive out. But we're going to try turning it on just to see what happens. I'm really not too sure. I wouldn't be surprised if with that hinge the way it is, nothing happens at all because I'm guessing the cables have been damaged somewhat. But before we do turn it on, let's just take a look around it. Let's see if we can work out what the specs are in case we can't get this to turn on. I'm doubting that we will get into it. So let's flip this thing over and see if the specs are on the bottom. So that's not particularly helpful. It's just got the ethernet ID, the serial number, and then it says PowerBook G4. It doesn't say what the clock speed is or how much RAM we have or anything like that. So I'm guessing that's all we have to go off. There doesn't seem to be any other information around here saying what the specs are. I would have assumed they would have been on this label. That's where they usually are. But looking on the base of the machine, you can probably see copyright 2001. So I'm guessing that this is a pretty early one. I believe these titanium ones came out in 2001. So I'm assuming that this is pretty close to the start of the run. And actually, I did know that this was a 2001. I'd completely forgotten, but I did know. In the listing for this, it said that the seller bought it brand new back in 2001, and then in 2005, they upgraded to a newer powerbook. I'm guessing an aluminium one. So this thing only lasted them four years, and in that four years, somehow they managed to get this to be in the awful state that it is in. I've got no idea how they did it. These things weren't particularly durable in terms of all this paint, but I don't know how they managed to get it so bad in such a little amount of time. It's not like this happened after the fact, because this whole damage thing was the main reason that they retired it, and then they just put it in their attic until about a week ago when I bought this thing. So it's kind of cool that I'm only the second owner. It's also kind of not cool that this thing is so bad as it is. Oh, and also, it doesn't lock shut. The latch doesn't work, so that's not particularly helpful. But I think now it's time to open this thing up and see what it's actually like under the lid. And now somehow the latch has started working. But before we open that, let's just take a look at that lid. How on earth this managed to get like this in only four years? I have no clue. I wonder if any of this will come off. Yeah, it looks like some of that will scratch off, so I don't know what it is. It kind of looks like it's been run over, but if it had been run over, I would expect it to be completely dented and smashed up, so I honestly haven't got a clue. But let's just open this thing up and see what the inside is like. I've not looked at this thing yet. I've only seen it on not very good pictures, and um, that's kind of what I expected. So rather unsurprisingly, all the paint is coming off in here as well and it kind of looks like someone's attempted to repaint it at some point or maybe that's just the underneath of the paint that's on it. It's kind of 
yellow here, there's bits of sticker residue, whatever that is, it looks like old masking tape or maybe a sticker, I'm really not too sure. The keyboard is actually repulsive, I really don't know if you can see that, but this thing is incredibly dirty underneath every single key. There's a little dent on it there, which I'm guessing you can see overall, this just doesn't look very good and the screen is all dirty, yeah. This isn't a particularly pleasant laptop and I think I would be quite disappointed if I had paid more than a pound for this thing and of course it will hardly stay up by itself because of that hinge. I can sort of push it back into place but then yeah, it just comes off its mount again and then it's completely wonky but apparently this thing does turn on so let's try that. I must say I don't really want to touch this thing because it's got 20 years of grime. Well, not really 20 years of grime, but 20 year old grime on it. So I really do need to give this a clean if I can get it to do anything. If I can't get it to do anything, I really wouldn't be surprised if I just chuck it in the bin. It's actually that disgusting. I can't really use it for parts because it's all just a complete mess. Maybe I will try and do a DIY respray of all this paint, see if I can get it to look somewhat nice, but it's actually disgusting and I don't want to go near it. But anyway, I've got my PowerBook charger. This did come with one, but I'm not going to use it. It looks like some sort of dodgy knockoff, so I'm going to use mine. This being a titanium PowerBook, all the ports are on the back and so is the charger. I've not actually looked at the ports because that can help you determine the model. So maybe we'll do that in a bit, but I will just plug in the power. There is now a green light on the charger showing that something is attempting to go on. Let's press the power button. And nothing seems to be happening. Let's try pressing that again. I can hear a sort of high pitched squeaky noise but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. The charger is still lit up as you can see down there. So I'm going to try resetting the PMU, the power management unit. That might help or it might do absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna have to touch this rancid keyboard, shift control, option, command, and hold down the power. And that did absolutely nothing. So this thing looks to be completely dead at the moment. So I've just thought maybe it's not doing anything because there isn't a battery in it. I did get a battery with it, but it's currently not in. So I'll unplug the charger and try putting the battery in. I'm guessing the battery is completely dead, but it might be worth just giving that a go. I don't see why it would require the battery, but let's just see if that does make a difference. And while it's over on its side, we can take a look at the ports in there. So we get modem, S-Video, VGA, two USBs, Ethernet and Firewire 400. VGA shows that this is an earlier model, my 2002 titanium has DVI on it, so it is a newer model. This one also looks like it has infrared on it, which mine doesn't, which is interesting. In there you can see it looks quite dusty, so I'm guessing this thing's never been cleaned, but I'll go get the battery and see if that makes any sort of difference. Put that in, let's plug the charger back in and then see if this will do anything. There we go, I'll flip it back around just like that. Let's open this thing up without using the button. And now there's an orange light on the charger so I'm guessing it's trying to charge the battery. So I'm now going to try the SMC and if that doesn't work I'll then do the SMC then the PMU, just in case that somehow magically makes anything work. This was supposed to be working, so I would expect it to do something, even if it just came up with some crazy flashing on the screen because of the condition of this. It should still do something, which it doesn't seem to be at the moment. So with both the battery and power disconnected, we need to hold down the power button for five seconds. Now we can put the battery back in and also connect it back to power and that should then be a reset SMC. Battery is in, power is now back connected. Let's open this up again 
and let's try the power. Still nothing. That is interesting. So I think I have been doing the PMU wrong. I think it's only shift control option power. I was pressing command two. So I'm going to try without pressing command because I don't think that is a required key. So let's do shift control option and hold down power for five seconds. Nope, still not working. Okay, it's just been a minute. I've not touched it and it's just bonged. It just seems to have turned itself on. Let's see what it now does. I haven't touched it, but there's, there's an Apple logo on the screen. I don't know if you can see that, but there is an Apple logo coming up on the screen. I guess you can hear that hard drive. So there is a drive in here. Doesn't sound very healthy, but it looks like there is a drive in here. But the spinny wheel has now frozen, it looks like. Yeah, there we go. That's a bit of a better angle. I can see there's a dark patch up there. Also one at the bottom. It looks like this has been hit at some point. But it looks like it's somewhat coming on. It looks like it's frozen. But this is sort of a step in the right direction. I didn't touch it. I just left it and then it came on. Maybe it just needed time connected to the power or maybe doing the PMU the right way somehow made this do something. Let's just try the keyboard. I can make numlock light up. That seems good. I'm not too sure why this has frozen though. I'll leave it a little while, but if nothing happens, I'll just turn this thing off and we'll try turning it on again. So I can't hear the hard drive anymore, so I'm going to turn this off. And we're going to try turning it back on. Let's just try the power button. There we go. It seems to have bongs again. And this has working speakers, as you can hear. So if nothing else works on this, I can take the speakers and put them on my other titanium one, because that does not have working speakers. Let's see if we get past this screen this time. There we go, the spinny wheel has started to spin, but that hard drive literally sounds like a bag of nails. I hope you can hear that, but I think this is probably the worst hard drive I've ever heard. But considering the condition of this machine, I'm guessing it has been dropped and chucked around a bit, so I wouldn't be surprised if this drive was on its way out. And it looks like we're Coming up on is this Tiger. Looks like we might have Tiger on this thing, waiting for network initialization. Cursor is moving and wow, we're at a login screen. Considering this, it was meant to have its drive taken out. It looks like we have now booted up. The trackpad seems to be moving a bit strangely. I'm moving and it's just jumping all over the place. Not very well, but it looks like we have some sort of workingness about this if that's something which you can say we've got three accounts on here i'm guessing i'll have to blur the names out oh oh dear uh that's not very good what what is going on here i can still control it but uh that doesn't look very good. I'm getting flashbacks to the £10 power book. Now, is this because the display is not connected properly or have the graphics gone on this? I'm not too sure. Let's just try shutting that. Will that fix anything? No. Let's open it again. Well, this doesn't look very good, does it? I'll shut it completely so it might go to sleep, I doubt it, because the latch doesn't completely work. I can hear the hard drive, don't know what it's doing. Let's wake it up again. And it looks like it's still awake. I can still see the login screen somewhat. Looks like I've now lost control of the volume. Numlock still lights up. I can't hear the volume changing. Can I change the brightness? Doesn't look like I can, but I don't know whether this is happening in the software or the display. My cinema display is behind me. That uses DVI, but this being an early titanium, this only has VGA on the back. So I'm gonna have to pull out a VGA monitor and let's see if anything is going on, which I just can't see on this screen because this might just be a bad screen or maybe the graphics are having some sort of failure. I don't want to leave this on unattended in case it explodes, but I also don't want to turn it off 
in case it doesn't turn back on. But I think I will have to turn this off just for the time being while I go get that monitor because I don't want to cause a fire. So let's, there we go. That's now off. I'll shut it just so it can have a little bit of a rest. I'll come back once I've got a monitor. Monitor is now connected up. Let's open up the power book again. Let's see if this will turn on. Oh, well, it won't turn on again now. So let's try shift control option power. There we go. This thing is now booting up, I think. We can hear the drive again. It doesn't seem to be bonging. Hopefully this will now do something. Or maybe not. Now it doesn't seem to be doing anything. It is on. There we go. We've got a bong now. Hopefully we should be able to get back to the login screen and anything that does come up we should be able to see up here. It's on the right input. Oh dear, what's this up to? But on the monitor it looks to be just fine. So maybe it's just the internal display which is now deciding to play up which is interesting. I should probably try this on the £10 power book when it next does its graphical things just to see whether it is the graphics or not because I'm guessing if on an external monitor it's showing up fine it's probably just a display problem so I'm guessing this display has finally started to suffer from its injuries and it's just not very happy. The screen's now gone black. Are we going to get the tiger background up on here? I would expect that we will do in a moment. Yep, there we go. Tiger background up there. So I'm guessing the login things are now showing up on here in theory. Maybe if I shut this and tip it upside down so it latches, we should get it to completely show up on here. Yeah, there we go. It's now showing up perfectly fine on that monitor. I'm guessing there's probably passwords on these accounts. I'll get a mouse, plug that in, see if I can get into them, but I'm guessing I probably won't. So there we are. I think that that is where I'm going to leave it for today. If you want to spend a pound on an Apple computer, this is probably as good as it is going to get. The lid won't stay down and you can't even get into it because the screen doesn't even stay open properly. And if it does stay open, you can't see anything on it because it's just full of artifacts. So should you buy a one pound Apple computer? Absolutely not. It is pretty much unusable. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this thing. I didn't really have any plans for it. I can't really part it out because any parts that would be useful on this are pretty much all ruined. There's tape all over it. It's all scratched and a little bit dented, not to mention it's just full of dirt and it's making me feel a bit sick just looking at it. So this will now be it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Maybe it was interesting in some way. I'm kind of more horrified that someone managed to treat this computer so badly over a period of four years. These things were very expensive machines, I believe at least £2,000 back in the day, and that was a lot for a computer. So how someone could let it get like this in such a small amount of time, I really have no clue. And considering this is quite an early one, it really would be something quite special if it was still in working condition and looked a bit nicer than this. Also, I don't even know what the specs are of this. I guess that's something to find out in the future if I can get it to do anything. So thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next one, which may be more ropey Mac content. Goodbye.